One extremely important application of the calculus we're learning is to approximate the value of a function. When you ask Google what is sine of 2.718, Google isn't going to tell you an exact answer, but it's going to give you a very long decimal approximation, and you can get an approximation that's going to be good enough for basically whatever you need. Now what we're going to show you is some ways of approximating, and we're going to start with some very simple ones, and we're going to build up to more and more complicated ones. And the more and more complicated ones really are used in computer and calculator systems to varying degrees, maybe with some different variations. Uh, but the fundamentals of what we're doing is the fundamentals of how your average calculator is going to calculate for you the sign of any number that you put into it. So let's talk about what we do when we approximate a function. Let's say this function I've drawn here is some function that's usually pretty difficult to figure out what it is. Maybe we know some values. So for instance, for e to the x, I know e to the 0 is 1, but I don't know e to the 2.5. That would be really hard to calculate. So how can we approximate them? Well, what we do is we take a secondary function and we take a point. And we say that that secondary function is pretty close to our actual function near that point. Now, in theory, this secondary function could look like anything. We'll start with simple functions and build our way up to more complicated functions. But I'm going to take some secondary function. And maybe I'll call it A for approximation. And I'm going to say, well, at this point, which is easy to calculate, crucially, my approximation function and my actual function are pretty similar. And if I'm nearby to that point that's easy to calculate, well, maybe what I really want is the value of my function, but I'll settle for the value of my secondary function. So I can't actually calculate, when I plug in x to that black line, I can't actually calculate what is that y value. But if I've done a good job cho choosing my blue function, then the y value of my blue function should not only be pretty close to the y value that I really want, but it should also be, and this is crucial, something that's easy to calculate. Now one tiny wrinkle is that oftentimes we won't give you the function, we'll just ask you to calculate some value. So suppose I told you this, I want you to approximate the tangent of 0 0.75 radians. No one knows what this is equal to. Nobody knows. We can get a pretty good decimal approximation, and we do that, again, using methods that are just a little more sophisticated than what we're going to do now. So I didn't tell you a function, but you notice that if I say f of x is the tangent of x, what I'm asking you is to approximate f of 0.75. So if we have our function, now what we need is our value where we can easily calculate the value of the function and also it's not too far from 0.75. So let's remember what tangent looks like. I've only drawn sort of the relevant portion here. Of course, it's periodic. And let's also think about 0.75. Now 0 0.75, that's the same as 3 divided by 4. And so it's not too far off from pi over 4. And pi over 4 is definitely something I can plug into tangent. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and later on we're going to be differentiating tangent, but I know sine of pi over 4 is 1 over the square root of 2, cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over the square root of 2. So pi over 4 is definitely one of these points where I can calculate my trigonometric values. Again, 0.75 is not one of those points. We have no idea what tangent of 0.75 is, but I know what tangent of pi over 4 is. So let's use pi over 4 as what we've been calling a, our point that's easy to calculate. And let's go through the different approximations. For a constant approximation, all I'm going to say is that 0.75 is close to pi over 4, so tangent of 0.75 should be close to tangent of pi over 4. So our approximation is that, well, tangent of 0.75 should be about 1. What that looks like if I were to draw it is I would to say, well, tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So I'm just going to assume that everything nearby it is also 1. That looks like this constant line. So if I'm here at 0.75, 
I'm going to take the value of the green function because the value of the black function is too hard to find out. And I'm just going to hope that this green y value and this black y value are the same. That's the constant approximation. Now let's increase our complexity a little and talk about the linear approximation. For the linear approximation, I'm going to, again, go to the point that I know how to evaluate. And near that point, I'm going to approximate tangent by a line. And that line should be as good as possible. So it's going to be the tangent line. And it's going to pass through this point, And it's going to have the same slope as my function. So let's call the linearization L. In your book, all of these approximations are just called capital F. But let's use L for now to stand for linear. And again, this is just the tangent line. So this blue function is going to be f of a plus f prime of a x minus a, where a, we decided, is pi over 4. So f of a is tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. And f prime of a is secant squared of pi over 4. And this is 1 over cosine pi over 4 squared, which is 1 over 1 over the square root of 2 squared. And that's going to be 2. So my linearization is going to look like 1 plus 2 x minus pi over 4. And I can simplify that a little to be 2x minus pi over 2 plus 1. But again, what I know is that it's going to be the line that shares this point with tangent and has the same slope as tangent. So now, crucially, I can figure out, OK, if I'm here at 0.75, maybe I can't figure out the y value on the tangent. But what I can figure out is the y value on my blue line, and I'm going to hope that they're close. So I'm going to say that tangent of 3 quarters should be about the same as L of 3 quarters. And this is 2 times 3 quarters minus pi halves plus 1, which is 3 halves plus 1 minus pi halves, which is 5 halves minus pi halves or 5 minus pi over 2. So my approximation now is 5 minus pi over 2. We can increase complexity and talk about a quadratic approximation. So now I'm going to approximate this with a quadratic equation. And it should, again, share this point, share the first derivative, and share the second derivative. Remember, the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. So what I'm doing is I'm making a parabola, and that parabola should follow this as close as possible. So again, what I really want is the value of the black function at 0.75, but I'm hoping the value of the red function at 0.75 will be pretty close, and also something that I can calculate. So my quadratic approximation, if I have some parabola, it's going to be p of x is f of a, remember that was our linear approximation, plus f prime at a times x minus a, and now those together were our linear approximation, plus a third term, 1 half f 2 primes of a, x minus a, squared. Now tomorrow you'll learn about how to extend this even more to an even more nuanced function, but this is the quadratic version. So let's figure out what these things are. Well, f of x is tangent of x, f prime of x is secant squared x. Remember, you should have that memorized. So the derivative of the derivative of x, I can chain rule. 2 times secant x times the derivative of secant x, which is secant x times tangent x. So I get 2 secant squared x tangent of x. 
So now I can figure out that f of pi over 4 is tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. f prime of pi over 4 is 1 over cosine pi over 4 squared. Cosine of pi over 4, again, is 1 over the square root of 2. So this is the square root of 2 squared. So this is 2. And f double prime of x is 2 times secant squared x, which we just learned is 2, times tangent of x, which is 1. So this is 4. Now this lets me fill in that p of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus 1 half f double prime of a times x minus a squared. And that simplifies down a little bit to 1 plus 2 x minus pi over 4 plus 2 x minus pi over 4 squared. So that gives us that red parabola. And again, if you check these values, f of a, f prime of a, and f double prime of a, they should correspond to p of a, p prime of a, and p double prime of a. That's something you should be able to check. All right, so now I have an equation of a parabola, and it's not exactly the same as tangent, but hopefully it's close when I'm close to pi over 4, and crucially, I can actually figure out values here. So I'm going to approximate. I'm going to say, well, tangent of 0.75, that's f of 3 quarters, hopefully is close to p of 3 quarters. And p of 3 quarters is something I can calculate. It's 1 plus 2 times 3 quarters minus pi quarters plus 2 times 3 quarters minus pi quarters squared, which is 1 plus 3 minus pi over 2 plus 3 minus pi squared over 8. So this is going to be my quadratic approximation. Tangent of 0.75 should be pretty close to 1 plus 3 minus pi over 2 plus 3 minus pi squared over 8. And I have a pretty good approximation for pi already, so given that pi is about 3.1415926, I could figure this out by hand if I had to. And indeed, if you had something like a calculator, they would have stored some pretty accurate decimal representation of pi, and they would figure out some sum like this rather than just figuring out tan of 0.75, because you sort of can't just figure out tan of 0.75. It's not equal to some easy decimal or some easy relation to pi.